Howdy yoga friends, Jen here. Today's practice is a little bit firmer to build strength, flexibility, and most important, mental alertness. Let's get started. For today's practice, you may want a block. I'm gonna place one at either end of my mat here. And then we're gonna just stand and get into the body. So I'll get you to take your feet a little bit wider than hip distance. Roll the top of your hips back and have some bounciness within your knees. Now this is just a spinal movement that we're gonna go into and there's really no right or wrong way to do this. You just start to organically move the spine, maybe a little bit of swaying, maybe some gentle back arching. And we just start to notice how we feel within the body. The beauty of this is that you're at home and nobody else is watching you. So let go of any of your inhibitions and really just feel the spine move and bring your connection here into the breath. Feel your weight shift from side to side, how that feels for your feet. And then just using the breath to make these movements within the body. Again, there's no right or wrong. Moving through today's practice with a sense of strength and awareness of how things feel for your body. So we start to come out of this organic, gentle movement that we've created. And we're gonna come now just to face the front of our mats. We're gonna take our feet about hip distance apart here and move into our forward fold, first forward fold. So for this first forward fold, I want you just to scoosh back through the booty and roll down through the spine. Now, if you are tight or sore through your lower back, we're gonna take your elbows here to support the upper thighs and then just let to start your head to drop down here towards the mat. We'll take a couple of breaths here, maybe four or five breaths, allowing the spine to free up and we're just going to let the body hang here. So over time you may be able just to release the forearms from the thighs, let your head drop down, the crown of the head drawing towards the floor, allowing the weight of your torso here to be tractioned by your head and your arms gently. Feel your feet firmly planted here. And start to lift up through the sit bones. Keep a connection here of your ribs and your thighs. Now we're gonna to come to stand three times. And on this first one, all we're gonna do is slightly bend through the knees and roll up like a rag doll. So draw the navel back, rolling up vertebra by vertebra, the hands and the elbows still interlace. And once we come to stand, we're gonna raise the hands up and over the head. Press the backs of the tops of the hips back. Lengthening here through the spine, maybe raise the gaze. And this time as we exhale, you can either roll down again with the hands on the thighs or Drawing the navel back, fold forward, hinging from the hips, maintaining that tall spine and taking the body back here to fold, our second forward fold. Again, let's hold here for a breath or two. Nice and calm. Feel your weight here between the toes and the heels, a slight rocking maybe. Now you can come to rise like we did last time, rolling up, or with your navel drawn back to your spine, we're just gonna lift the torso with that flat back. To the reverse of that hinging forward, we come to stand with a tall spine, the hands still interlaced, roll the top of the hips back, raise the gaze here if that feels okay for your neck, and feel the muscles of the lower abdomen start to activate. 
our last forward fold here, either rolling down or hinging forward from the hips. Take your gaze forward and bow, lengthening from the navel to the chin as you fold forward here. And again, just coming to allow the arms and the head to traction the spine. We'll take three more calm breaths here, softening through the front and back lines of the body. And we're going to release our hands to the floor here. And either with your hands on your shins or fingertips to the floor, we're going to lift the sternum forward, draw the shoulders away from the ears, and take a smooth breath in. From here, plant your hands and step back into downward facing dog. Now you want your hands shoulder distance apart, your feet hip distance, and just let your head drop down here in between the shoulders. We're going to start to stretch out through that back line of the body. So we're going to bend the right knee and press that left heel towards the floor. And just feel how that gives you a nice stretch and lengthening through the left side of the leg. And then we'll swap, press that right heel and bend the left knee. The armpits move down towards the floor, the gaze, the face soft. And then we'll swap one more time. Press that left heel to the floor, bend the right knee. If you want, you can drop that right knee over towards the left side of your mat. And that's gonna give you a deeper stretch here through the left outer hip and maybe through the right side of the body as well. Take your right heel back, even up through the hips. And then we'll bend the left knee and press the right heel to the floor. Stay here or draw that left knee over to the right side of your mat. Opening up here through the right outer hip. And then slowly just coming back to your symmetric downward facing dog. From here we start to move again through the posture. So as we inhale, we will um, take the right leg out behind us to stretch. Reach the right toe tips. Press up between the, or the back of the right thigh here. And we're gonna take that right leg here through the midline of the body and step it in between your hands as silently as you can. Fingertips to the floor here, lift up through the heart, draw the shoulders towards the hips. And then with the navel drawn back, we're gonna raise the torso and stretch up to the fingertips. Sink low here through your lunge. Draw the shoulders away from your ears. We're gonna spin that left heel towards the floor so that the left toes are pointing that top left edge of your mat. And we're gonna drop the hands down here to shoulder height into Virabhadrasana two. You want your right knee just above your right ankle and we'll take the gaze here over the right fingertips. Again, draw those shoulders away from your ears. So these beauty of these standing postures is that there is a lot to focus on here. You want to have your shoulders above your hips, the face and the jaw soft, the fingers drawing away from each other, strength through the legs, calmness through the breath, the sense of the inner thighs drawing away from each other. Just one more calm breath here. And then we're going to rotate the hips to the front edge of the mat, turn that back foot to face forward as well. And again, we're going to lengthen up through the arms. Now we move into our first balance of today, Ardha Trandrasan. So what we're going to do here is take this right hand to the floor outside of the right little toe. And this is where the block comes in handy. You might want to have your hand here on the block, just in front of you. So you can take the left hand to your hip to begin with, and what we're gonna do is shift the weight into that right foot, and then start to raise that left foot here. Now that's up to you if you wanna raise the leg or leave the left toes tips on the floor. We open the left hip up towards the ceiling and raise the left hand. You can take your gaze up or down. And again, we're just working with the sense of balancing the navel drawn back, the shoulders away from the ears. And 
gonna take another breath here, lifting up through that left leg. And then let's bend that right knee, take that left foot gently back to the floor, raise the torso, and we're gonna turn to face the long edge of our mat, and we're gonna turn the toes in towards each other. So with the toes turned in here, press the outer edges of your feet into the mat. Take your hands to the back of your hips. Roll the top of your hips back, lift up through the heart, squeeze the shoulder blades. And again, bow forward, hinging through the hips. And we just bow halfway here. If you have any tension through the lower back, you can use your hands on your thighs to support or maybe even bend your knees. And then we're gonna release our hands to the floor and then walk the hands away from the body so kind of like a long or a wide-legged downward facing dog here the head drops down in between the shoulders the armpits move back towards the knees heart center dropping down navel gently back and we bring an arch here to our feet feeling the strength in the back of the legs as well as the flexibility. We'll just take another two breaths here, nice and calmly exhaling. From here, we'll walk the hands back in line with the feet and we'll turn our right toes to the front edge of the mat again. Walk the hands over the right foot and then press down through the palms and step back into downward facing dog. And you want to press those hands forward, the heels back. Nice calm breath here. Now this time in our down dog, we'll raise the right heel and keep the hips um, somewhat in line with each other, but we're going to roll that right hip up towards the ceiling. And again, just creating a sense of length here for the right side of the leg and the hip. If you want, you can just walk your dog, bending alternate knees. And then we'll press that right heel to the floor and just swap sides. So we'll lift the left heel and then start to raise the left hip slightly. Keep your shoulders here parallel to the floor. Take a calm breath or two. And then we'll press that left heel back down. And from here, we'll extend the left leg behind us to a three-legged dog. Press the right heel down, press up um, into the back of the left thigh. And then step that left leg gently in between your hands. Fingertips to the floor. Take your gaze forward, draw the shoulders away from your ears. Draw the navel back and then we'll sweep the hands forward to come into a lunge, sink low through the hips. And then we're going to spin on that right foot, take that right heel to the floor and we move into Virabhadrasana 2 on the second side. So hands drop down to the shoulders, actively draw your fingertips away from each other. Draw your left knee to your left little toe and then take your gaze here over your left middle finger. You want to keep your alignment of your shoulders above your hips and your breath soft. Take another two breaths here. See if you can sink down through the hips, roll the top of the hips back. Maintain the focus over the middle finger. And then again, we're going to turn the hips to the left toe tip and spin onto the right foot. So now the, both of the hips are pointing forward, the right toes are pointing forward, and we're gonna raise the hands up towards the ceiling. From here, we move into Ardha Chandrasana on the second side. So we'll take that left hand to the floor here in the lunge, just to set up. The right hand can stay raised, or you can take that right hand to your hip. And if you want, you can take your block to the outer left side of your left foot. And from here, we're gonna sweep the weight forward onto the left leg. 
lightness on the hand or the fingertips, and then we'll raise the right leg here up towards the ceiling, opening that right hip as well. And then when you're ready, start to lift that right hand. You wanna stack the shoulders, draw the shoulders here also towards the hips, so not crowding the neck. And reaching out to the right big toes, calm breath, navel drawn back to the spine, engaging. Last breath here. And then again, bend that left knee, silently take that right foot back to the floor, raise the torso, come back to facing the long edge of your mat, turn your toes in towards each other, hands to the hips, draw the elbows back, roll the top of the hips back, lift up through the heart, and again, let's bow a third or halfway forward if you need hands to the thighs to support you. What I love about these standing postures and these balancing postures is that when you're really focusing and building that strength and it's very difficult to let the mind wander elsewhere. We take the hands to the floor and again, we move into that wide-legged downward dog. It's not really a down dog. The stance is just a little narrower here between the hands and the feet. But we have that sense of lengthening through the back line of the body. The hips lifting, the sit bones lifting, the head dropping. And just take another breath or two here. Walk your hands back in and then take your hands to your hips. Draw your navel to your spine. We're going to come up with that flat back. Release the hands. Give your shoulders a little circle. And then we're going to step one foot at a time in to stand. So we're going to move into some standing balances. And we'll start first by standing on the left leg. And we're going to take that right knee and just lift it. So you can either just come to the toe tip or draw that right knee into the chest using your arms to help you stabilize. And this one's really nice for freeing up the lower spine. If you have difficulty with your balance here, you can always hold on to the wall. It's lifting up through the sternum, drawing the shoulders from the ears. And we move right from this posture into Vrksasana the tree. So the sole of the right foot touches either the inner ankle of the left leg, the calf, or just above the knee into the upper left thigh. We'll take the hands here in to the prayer position in front of the heart, sense of the shoulders drawing away from the ears, the right knee drawing away from you, lifting up through the spine. One more smiling breath in. And then we'll release the hands. Release the right foot, and then you may want to just give your left foot a little bit of a shake. <sighs> Let it go. Let's come to our second side. We're going to wait onto the right foot. Roll the top of the hips back. Draw the navel back. Nice and firm through the abdominal center here. Come to your left toe tips. You might just want to stay here if you're really feeling activated, strong, and stable. And if you want to take it a little bit deeper, you can start to raise that left leg and maybe even wrap your hands around the left shin. Using the strength of your arms to take that left knee a little bit higher, making sure that your spine still stays erect, the crown of the head lifting, the gaze soft. Take a couple more calm breaths here. And then again, we move either into Vrksasana with the foot at the ankle, calf, or upper thigh. Typically, whatever you did on the first side, you repeat on the second side. We'll take the hands to the heart here. Once you've got your leg in the right position, a sense of pressing the hips slightly forward, but the left knee drawing back. So activating through the left thigh and drawing the shoulders from the ears. Take 
two more breaths. And then we'll gently release the hands and the leg, and we'll give that right foot a little bit of a shake. Now, we'll take our feet here with the toes just pointing a little bit duck foot, but the toes in line with the kneecaps. And we're just gonna come into a bit of a squat. Take the hands forward to balance you and to see how far you can come down. This is just really nice here to free out the lower spine. With your forearms, just inch your way forward in between the thighs. Take your palms into the heart center here. This is kind of like a wide-legged uh, crow posture. Press the palms together, pressing the inner arms to the inner legs and the legs into the arms. Lift up through the spine. Take a calm breath in. Nice to release the spine. Now we take the hands behind us and we lower back down onto our backs. So you want to have here the hands behind you. We're gonna lower all the way back down. And with your feet here, just hip distance apart, we'll drop our knees over to the left edge of our mat and pause. Keep your shoulders firmly planted here onto the floor. The gaze can stay neutral, looking up towards the ceiling, or you can turn your head over to the right shoulder. And you can stay here or pick up your left foot and place it on top of your right upper thigh. Take two more breaths here. I love how this one opens up through that odor hip. Take that left foot to the floor, navel draws to the spine, knees raised to the ceiling. Drop your knees now over to your right and pause. Neutral gaze or gaze over your left shoulder. And then we'll pick up that right foot and place it on top of your left upper thigh. a couple of breaths here just getting a nice stretch through the top of the left hip flexor maybe a little bit for the lower spine calm breath and then let's release that right foot we're going to raise both of the knees back up towards the ceiling take the gaze to the ceiling and we're gonna take the soles of the feet together and drop your knees wide here to come into Supta Baddha Konasana. Paying particular attention here, not only to the stretch that you're getting for the inner thighs here, but also the lower spine. You can press the lower back into the floor and notice how that feels for you. You can arch the lower spine and notice how that feels for you. And then you can come into a neutral and hold whichever of those variations feels best for your body today. We'll gently close the eyes and bring our focus back to our breath. So the yogic breath usually is through the nose, both in and out. And while there are very, there are many, many different yoga breath rhythms that you can take, just finding your own natural yet deep breath is probably the most effective for soothing your parasympathetic nervous system, creating mental calm and alertness. if you can allow your breath here to follow the rhythm of the body that you need and the mind to follow the breath. We 
draw the navel to the spine now and raise the knees back up towards the ceiling, soles of the feet to the floor. We'll just rest here for a moment. We'll press the lower back into the floor and then hug the knees into the chest. And you can make circles with the lower back here in one direction and then the other. And then we'll roll over to the right or the left sides of the mat. Rest the head here into your upper arm. Gently close your eyes. And gently witness the sense of stillness, peace, and calmness that we've created through the practice. Just allowing the body here to rest. The mind to be at ease. And then we'll press down with your top hand and make our way back to a comfortable seat. Come to your comfortable cross leg. We'll take the hands here together in front of the heart. Maybe close the eyes or take a soft gaze forward. And as you inhale, raise your hands high and stretch to the fingertips. As you exhale, take your hands down to your crown and then your eyebrow center, your throat, and your heart. Namaste. Thank you so much, friends, for joining me today. Please, if you enjoy the practice, remember to subscribe and share with the friends who you think could really value from the practice. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.